Welcome back to Reimagine 2021. I'm Yona Hockhauser, and today I'm glad to be joined by Amisha Letterman, Director of Communications at Clever.io. Amisha, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Yona, for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. Well, I'm happy to speak to you. You seem like a really awesome dude. Um, do you want to give our audience a little background, kind of who you are and how you got into blockchain? For sure, for sure. Um, I've been networking in the field of communications for over a decade, been in blockchain and crypto uh, since 2016. I joined the Clever team uh, in 2019 and um, been building and growing the Clever ecosystem ever since. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right, so let's hop right into it. What is Clever? Clever is truly all you need in crypto at this point um, and just adding upon adding new features. Clever is an app um, for iOS and Android that is a self-custody wallet. It's one of the fastest uh, growing self-custody wallets on the market. Currently supports 10 blockchains, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, Litecoin, Digibyte, Doge, Dash, Binance, Chain, XRP, and Bitcoin Cash. So essentially Impressive. all the major Did, did you ones. memorize all that? I, I live, breathe, and sleep clever. So it's uh, it's kind of in my system. Bravo. Um, and, and of course, these, these chains have been added uh, due to popular demand, not just from our users, but also from usage. Uh, the more mm -hmm. usage and users on a blockchain, the more likelihood that we will add it. Um, clever allows non-custodial nature of blockchain, meaning that the user downloads the app and gets the keys. We do not hold any keys. No one else can access the keys besides uh, the specific device of the user. Um, and uh, the Clever app is very versatile. Uh, you can hold and send, receive charge, of course, just regularly, but you can also stake both KLV and Tron. Uh, you can access Ethereum dApps like Uniswap and SushiSwap and any other fruit swaps that are out there um, directly in the uh, built-in browser, uh, as well as Tron dApps. Uh, so tens of thousands of dApps are, are directly available uh, to our users. Uh, we've just launched a partnership with another uh, Israeli prominent firm. Uh, everybody knows them, of course, in the uh, in the crypto industry. It's Simplex, uh, where we've um, built together over three, four months, a joint product to buy crypto uh, inside of Clever in a very, I would say, painless way. Um, it was usually, it used to be very painful to buy crypto uh, as you might you know, have experienced and many of us have experienced over the years. Um, but what we do together in Clever uh, with Simplex is just a very, very easy, simple, elegant and enjoyable user experience uh, to buy crypto and get it in 10, 15 minutes directly into your, to your wallet. Um, and, and it really um, is an ecosystem that's growing. Um, the app is just the fundamental uh, basics of, of what we're going in 2021, which of course I will go into later on. So, all right, so before we actually dive into the ecosystem and even the app itself, let's talk more uh, high level about self-custody. Uh, because essentially in the crypto world, you kind of have uh, 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 two basic options, which is either you either hold your keys yourself or you entrust a, uh, a third party to hold your keys for you, which is essentially uh, you're, you're, you're trusting them with, with, with all the access. They hold not your keys, not your crypto. I'm a big proponent of that. So how does self-custody work? You know, in my mind, true self-custody, you know, I write down my, my, my key on a piece of paper or on a, on a hardware wallet, and that's it. I got it. How does it work? What is Clever giving to me that enables them to both, I have my key, I'm, I'm the custody. Uh, so then what, is, what are they giving me? Just an easy UI UX to interact with my wallet? Yes, it's a local storage on your device, meaning that uh, the only way to, to access your funds is to go through your phone and your biometrics and your pin code. So there's several, several physical security layers uh, to get through on your device. Uh, but the entire app is built on a brand new operating system that we call Clever OS that has several added layers of security, which means that a, a signature 
uh, is, is signed uh, on, on several layers uh, on, on, the, uh, on the operational side. But what the self-custody actually means is that even if someone takes your phone, even if someone, uh, you lose your phone and someone accesses your Google account or your uh, Apple account, they cannot access your funds unless they know your password, have your face as biometrics, fingerprint, whatever you're using, um, which, which is quite unique and, and um, comforting uh, because uh, the local storage uh, means that no one else can access it, including Clever's own developers. So it, it's a very uh, central core principle of what we're doing, which is to empower our users to reclaim their financial freedom. It's a political statement, it's a financial statement, and it's a statement of self-empowerment that I own my crypto, I have my own keys, therefore I own my money. It's a, a, a completely novel, new concept for, for most 1% sitting on, on uh, uh, crypto Twitter and, and throughout the blockchain industry, but we're growing and it's fascinating uh, to see and it's amazing uh, to, to, to see the growth of uh, not just our app, but the industry itself. Um, you know, Bitcoin hitting 42K, Ethereum hitting a new all time highs and, and the entire industry just moving forward with voices um, that are, are much more secure and confident like Michael Saylor's and others that, that come in with um, a more philosophical basis of reserve currency and hedge against inflation with Bitcoin. So um, people love self-custody evidently. Like I was telling you, you and I, right before the, we started here that uh, over the past six months, uh, since the summer of 2020, we then had 255,000 total downloads. Today we have 2.2 million. So, so wow. that's a you know, 10x growth almost on, on six months. And it just shows how, uh, how that growing kind of furious interest in, in actually holding your own keys is on the market. And of course, because you guys don't have your own, key, don't actually hold the keys, uh, obviously, you know, if I, if I lose my phone, um, you know, you can't just give me, you know, uh, 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 or forgot my password. There's no forget password. I'm assuming you guys, there's, there's a seed, a uh, 12 word seed or whatever, 24, depending on, on, on what they choose. 12. Uh, a seed, seed recovery. Exactly. Um, with that seed recovery, am I able to recover my wallet through any other source? Let's say Clever goes out of the business, the app goes down, whatever it may be. Can I take that seed phrase and reconstruct my wallet in any in any environment, or does it have to be using the Clever app? Yes, you can reconstruct it in other apps, and especially also what's important for people who especially use um, Clever with a, a big uh, amount of funding, it's also important to take down your private keys, not mm -hmm. just your 12 words. Your 12 words uh, connect uh, through Clever in a way that's a little bit uh, smarter or clever perhaps, um, that um, it's not just uh, the 12 words for, for instance, Binance chain or for Bitcoin or for Ethereum or for Tron. The 12 words, if you lose your phone, if you lose your clever app and you wanna restore it, you have a new phone or you have a new uh, pad or device and you take it down, you input your 12 words, all of your accounts come back. Meaning that it's not just for one account, it's all the blockchains, and all the multiple accounts that you can that you have created on on your uh, on your clever app. But but my my question being, does as in you're able to do that one stop uh, uh, shop of of unlocking all your accounts? Does it have to be done through through clever, or can I can I also with that one seed phrase? Um, you know, let's like, let's say clever goes out of the business or whatever it may be. Am I able to take that seed? that one seed phrase and reconstruct all those accounts um, externally without having to rely on Clever? Of course, you cannot uh, create all accounts on, on another device because most other um, apps don't support the blockchains that we support. So uh, the seed uh, might work for one blockchain, but mm -hmm. not others. So uh, first and foremost, Clever uh, is not going out of business. 
Clever is growing exponentially. Uh, we've added uh, uh, so many developers uh, this year that uh, we are now over 50 developers inside the Clever team. Um, not just one of the fastest growing user bases, but also aggressively growing uh, developers team. So um, we're not going anywhere. Uh, and uh, the self-custody on Clever is, is more, I feel more secure uh, than I ever have with any hardware wallet or any uh, hot wallet or cold wallet I've used in the past. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm not picking on you. I'm only uh, bringing up issues or, or questions or worries that, that potential users might want to think about um, or be worried about and give you the chance to address them because I know a lot of people, you know, uh, who, who thought, who, who wanted to empower themselves, who want to hold their own keys, they kind of been burdened in the past. You know, looking at Ledger being one example, Ledger is obviously one of the biggest uh, when it comes to cold storage wallets. And, and yes, while they didn't leak the, you know, the, the, the keys and seats, they leaked major public data, uh, customer data, like home addresses, phone numbers, and, and things of that nature. So, which in itself is is it might even be worse uh, than right. than the, the the data itself because the uh, especially people on Ledger are usually people who hold quite uh, a significant amount of of crypto. That's why you you hold a, uh, you, you want a, a cold wallet, um, but this uh, breach on on Ledger giving out not just uh, addresses, names, phone numbers, uh, it, it's, it's really severe and it's really damaged uh, the industry quite some significantly for, for cold storage because it kind of takes away the purpose, right, of anonymity and privacy. Um, so, yeah, I know too many people who've contacted me about, uh, you know, getting threats uh, via all channels, not just email, but uh, via phone, SMS, uh, and and it's quite scary to be honest. And, and then, so the, the question is, is, you know, does Clever require either uh, customer data? Does it require any KYC? Does it require me to give personal information? And secondly, how do you guys store or, or keep safe that information? No, no KYC at yes. all. Yes. So we do not store your, your personal data because we do not have your personal data. Uh, we do not uh, hold your email. We do not hold your social security, your phone number, uh, nothing uh, of the likes. It's, it's uh, part of our philosophy to empower people privately and, you know, making people be um, kind of rulers of their own future or and holding holding the keys to their own future um, by not giving up too much of their personal information. So uh, you open, you, you download the Clever app on iOS or Android, you open the app, you take down your 12 words, you write them down on a paper, hopefully you store it up safely somewhere for forever. And uh, once you enter them, you can start, uh, you know, the life of, of the Clever app without putting in any personal information. Very important. That's what I like to hear. I love it, man. Uh, and, and I appreciate you guys offering that because the only thing safer than uh, deleting customer data is not asking for that data in the first place. So kudos to you, that's a big one. Um, now, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, let's say one of the, uh, the let's say um, the reasons or one of the, uh, let's say that reasons, one of the reasons why someone would historically not keep their own keys or, or you know, whether it be in a cold storage wallet or, or something, um, but rather give it to an exchange or third party uh, is because of the features. You know, like for instance, if you keep your money in finance, uh, not only is it holding your funds for you, but it enables you to kind of trade many pairs, swap, stake, all these features. Um, and historically, uh, self-custody wallets or, or cold storage wallets, you know, definitely not cold storage wallets, but self-custody wallets also have been lagging behind the mainstream uh, exchanges when it comes to that. Uh, what kind of features does Clever have that enables users not just to hold their funds, but actually utilize the funds? Great question. Uh, and it's really one of our main purposes. Um, it's important that Clever users worldwide do not feel like their funds are stuck simply because they're using a self-custody wallet. The opposite is true. We have uh, our own a native in-house built swap engine with over 300 uh, trading pairs, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, multiple tokens on both Ethereum, multiple tokens on both Tron, 
uh, Binance, uh, including Binance uh, chain token Travala, our partner uh, in the travel industry, um, Litecoin, Digibyte, Doge, all of these have swap pairs uh, with one another. Uh, it's a, a one click wonder. It's super convenient, saves time. Um, currently, we also have 50% lower fees. It, it just, um, it's just much easier than going and sending it to Binance, waiting for the money, uh, waiting for a good opportunity, put in an order book. That's not who the majority of people who are going to enter the space or currently are in the space actually want. They want that one click wonder. And that's what we're providing them with Clever Swap. Um, additionally, um, KLV staking. KLV is our native token, um, runs currently on uh, as a TRC20 token but uh, this year we'll be migrating to the Clever blockchain. Um, KLV is currently staked. 51% uh, of all KLV are staked seamlessly inside the app by thousands of users worldwide. Um, there's different staking uh, percentages depending on when, when you enter. Um, currently it's at 10%. And it's a deflationary model. So each, each year it goes down 2%. So next year is 8%, the year after 6%. 4% and 2% indefinitely from 2%. Uh, users, literally, it, it's just, it's the simplest thing in the world. Once again, simplicity is key to everything we do. User experience needs to be simple, enjoyable, elegant, um, and useful. So anyone can stay KLV directly inside of Clever. Uh, all you do is you, you freeze it, you stake it, uh, and then you can claim hourly rewards, daily rewards, weekly rewards, whenever you want, um, and use that KLV to whatever you want and have a passive income. So uh, there's a lot of uh, things you can do uh, inside of, of Clever. Uh, although it's a non-custodial wallet, it's really not a regular non-custodial uh, self-custody wallet. So uh, a lot of users, of course, uh, use the app because of the browser. Because most um, self software apps and crypto don't have a browser anymore, uh, or or don't have a good one, or a fast one, or a reliable one. So that's why we uh, currently support all Tron DApps, so people can grow their funds there. All Ethereum DApps, people can grow their funds there. And uh, within the next uh, roughly 30 days, we will also be adding uh, Binance Smart Chain. Very cool. Uh, now, those are two things I want to unpack there, uh, KLV and the browser. I'll start off with KLV. Uh, what's actually, what does the KLV do besides being staked? I mean, what, what is it exactly staking? What, what, usually staking is, a, uh, you know, is an economic incentive model to, uh, for validators and nominators. What are we staking and what does KLV do? Okay, so KLV as a use case, besides the sending, receiving uh, and staking, uh, the staking itself, uh, is part of a smart contract that increases the supply um, each year with 10% this year, 8% next year, 6% 6 after that in a deflationary model. So that is how the staking works. And that's how our users can, can take part and get rewarded for supporting the project and, and, and staking the KLV. Uh, beyond that, uh, the clever swap, uh, a central driving factor, the power uh, that, that fuels Clever Swap is KLV. So all swap pairs are paired with KLV. All swap pairs can be paid, the swap fees can be paid either with a reduced fee in KLV, or you can hold a bunch of KLV and have a VIP tier on how low your, your fees can get, or 0.15% actually, just by holding a lot of KLV in your wallet. Um, you can also participate in, in um, future staking of uh, the, the blockchain itself. We just put out our white paper a few weeks ago on clever.finance. Uh, you can find that. It's the Clever blockchain white paper where KLV, uh, it, it's, it's many blockchain protocols, blockchain foundations have, in my opinion, done a very great mistake when instead of using uh, one and the same token, for many platforms, many products, many services, they've done the opposite. 
create a product and create a token for that, create another service and create a token for that. We do it completely opposite. Every product and every platform that we have fielded and we're going to field, Clever is the main utility token. So KLV runs through the entire ecosystem, um, currently inside the app, inside the swap engine, inside the staking mechanism, from testnet in Q2 uh, on blockchain, this Q1 Clever exchange for mobile, centralized exchange. We need to diversify, of course. Uh, so a decentralized wallet building a centralized exchange in order to, to provide more for our users. Um, KLV will also be a central point in, in a really fascinating new product we're, we're building now also in Q1 for mobile. It's Clever Browser. So essentially taking the, the built-in browser and making it a native app uh, for, for anyone and all uh, to use with the desktop coming in Q3. Well, so KLV seems uh, to be a similar kind of uh, a business model or economic model as, as Binance's BNB. Um, you know, which, which brings its value from the actual use of the, of the actual platform, or in your case, the, 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 uh, the, wallet, the app. Um, do you think it's fair to say, I mean, you guys hey, let are- me, let, me, let me, Yona, sorry, let me just interrupt. Yeah. BNB is it's a very good, uh, sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to add no something. Problem. BNB has done a really cool thing about burning, right? And it's mm -hmm. really exciting about, you know, they burn uh, a certain percentage each, uh, each period. Uh, we burn 10% of all swap fees every uh, six hours. Mm -hmm. wow. So in our, our main Telegram group, uh, now 40 43,000 members, every, four, every six hours comes up this much uh, KLV has been, has been burned from swap fees. And that's something we do continuously each day. Um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to mention that. It's, a, it's another comparison with BNB. Uh -huh, gotcha. Well, so then would you think it's fair? I mean, you guys are uh, offering the, the, your, the ability to both uh, hold funds uh, as long with a bunch of features built on in terms of swapping, staking and all these things. Would you think it's would you think say it's fair to call you guys uh, uh, Binance with self custody as in you guys have all the functionality, ease of use and user experience of Binance, which is great uh, without having actually having to trust Binance holding your keys. Yona, you, 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 I've never heard the expression before, but you coined it, uh, Binance for self-custody. Uh, it's pretty clever. Um, I don't think we need to compare ourselves to anyone. I think Binance is doing a fantastic job um, on, on so many levels in, in uh, furthering crypto adoption throughout the world. Um, there's a reason they have sometimes 70% of, of all trading volume, um, but but we're not comparing ourselves or going after someone uh, simply because what they've made before. We're trying to learn from others' mistakes, other success, mm -hmm. um, and we're challenge, us challenging ourselves on a daily basis to, to just create better uh, products and, and more enjoyable, useful user experiences for, for our users. Um, but now that we're uh, fielding the exchange in, in Q1, uh, like I said, first for the browser um, and the desktop uh, for Clever Exchange will follow in Q3. There, there will be a, an added layer of uh, kind of versatile functioning inside of the Clever ecosystem. So anyone who, who doesn't want to trust Clever with custody on a centralized exchange can continue to use the Clever app, own your own keys, hold your own funds, and use the swap mechanism essentially inside yeah. inside Clever, um, but uh, it's going to be fascinating to to see uh, because we, we 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 everything we put into to our new products, including the the exchange, uh, we take uh, by by constantly just listening to our users. Mm -hmm. What do they want? What do they need? Um, what is good for them? What does not work? It, it is it is a challenging task because we currently have downloads in over 200 countries um, with the, the, I think the four largest countries right now is US, Nigeria, India, and Philippines. So you can just imagine the, 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 the diverse 
user base population uh, almost G in, in terms of geolocation. So the app is available in 24 languages. You can, instead of having in US dollars showing your in your you know all your values and amounts, you can choose 164 uh, different currencies. So for instance, I don't have dollars. I use the Israeli shekel, uh, which is pretty nice to, and you know, anyone in Philippines can can use their own native currency. Um, but we're building things from uh, constant feedback from our users and uh, not just what they want and request, but also what we see is needed in terms of uh, uh, market gap. Mm -hmm. And you know um, that, that is a great philosophy to build on and, and, uh, and, and a great way to build a business similar to what uh, Amazon did, kind of customer first and kind of really listen uh, to what people want and what people uh, want to use. Um, when we're going back to this idea of uh, self-custody and, and holding one's keys versus trusting a centralized exchange. And historically, like we mentioned, the big difference uh, being kind of the usability feature set and you guys had that taken care of. Um, another big uh, difference would be uh, cost. You know, uh, for most centralized exchanges, it's free to deposit onto the crypto, onto their uh, system and their platform because obviously they want it there. Uh, but then where, where they get you kind of, they'll say, is when you actually want to withdraw your funds out of their platform, that's when you get hit with the, with the big fee. Um, if I am keeping my funds in the Clever app with my Clever wallet, which is self custody, um, I can essentially move my funds for free. If I want to withdraw from my Clever, uh, my Clever wallet to my Ledger, my Le Ledger wallet, that that is free. There are zero fees taking place there. The only fees uh, that are included in the transaction or transfer right. uh, of funds from from our wallet. Uh, or to, to another account inside the wallet or to another account on the ledger or any other hardware wallet or software wallet uh, is the network fee, mm -hmm. right? So right. Uh, for instance, for UTXO uh, blockchains uh, like, blo uh, like Bitcoin and Digibyte and Litecoin, uh, we have custom fees. So anyone can choose to do it very fast and pay a little bit more or to take whatever time the, uh, the blockchain uh, processes it. Uh, sometimes uh, Bitcoin takes a few minutes, sometimes it takes a few hours. Uh, it's, it, it, we don't really know. Um, but in the, so, so that's one thing. It's only the network fees in terms of transfer. Uh, we, you know, when you, when you transfer out of, in and out of exchanges, as you said, there's always this transaction fee that goes directly to the exchange. No, it does not exist in Clever. Mm -hmm. that's, that's also another, another uh, positive uh, for someone who wants to get the feature set uh, of a centralized exchange with having their own keys. Uh, that's just another pro. You're slowly turning me into, uh, you're slowly converting me into a believer. Um, now you, you mentioned that. Hey, listen, uh, it's, it's, I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you that there's really nothing out there on the market that is as enjoyable as, as the Clever app in terms of uh, crypto usage. And you know, if you get in now, along with the 2.2 million users that are already downloaded the app, uh, you will be part of the evolution of the ecosystem and, and the formation of the ecosystem. Uh, we're we're going to field uh, a really uh, exciting uh, new initiative uh, shortly, uh, which relates very much to uh, news, education, community gamification uh, inside the app, uh, where the community members and other influencers will be able to contribute their content, their articles, their videos, uh, and get paid in KOV, of course, get rewarded for different uh, daily tasks. And uh, uh, it's going to be a very exciting way to see how uh, a global community uh, shares knowledge with each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's very cool. Uh, Wikipedia, but, but actually getting paid for it. Very cool. You can also use that one. Um, now, uh, you mentioned that you guys are also launching your own blockchain. Um, what exactly would be the added value there for the user of, of the Clever blockchain? What is unique or special about the Clever blockchain? Um, and especially important today, will it be kind of EVM uh, compatible? Will it play nice with all the DeFi toys that are available uh, out there in the space? Great question. Um, a different kind of answer. Uh, I, after the interview, if you have time, once again, clever.finance, you can read the entire white paper, but I'll give you the, the gusp of it. Essentially, what we're doing, um, 
in the Clever team, there are engineers and, and security architects and blockchain um, engineers that have a vast experience in building on top of many different kinds of blockchains, uh, including uh, UTXOs, but also smart contract blockchains like Ethereum and Tron, of course. Um, instead of uh, utilizing the old model of smart contracts, uh, anyone who's who, who has looked into the security uh, issues and vulnerabilities of smart contracts know that it's actually the dumbest part of a blockchain uh, in the sense of um, malicious actors and hackers being able to um, access people's funds, trick uh, the smart contract itself, get away with hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars over, over just the past year. And smart contracts um, give the added value of functionality, right? Of a feature, of a trigger, whether it's a swap or a loan or a collateral. Um, it, what we're gonna do in Clever Blockchain is that we're gonna remove the smart contracts completely. So there will not be an EVM or TVM or other virtual machine. Instead, all the features needed for developers building on top of Clever Blockchain will be built by the Clever Foundation natively into the blockchain. You want a swap mechanism on your token or your project? It will be clickable. And it's native to the blockchain, meaning it's unhackable. You want a loan feature or a trigger for any kind of game or dice or uh, a collateral or DeFi uh, aspect, uh, a feature that, that is requested and used on many different uh, um, smart contract apps today, we will build it into the blockchain, make it native to the blockchain, thereby increasing security significantly while making it a lot simpler for developers to actually deploy uh, their apps. And upon that, uh, we're gonna provide a Clever OS SDK, which means that through uh, the blockchain, you'll actually be able to take our wallet and essentially plug it into any app, website, wearable device that you're building on top of. Mm -hmm. And like, like you mentioned, there has been, you know, noticeably or, you know, uh, very well-known uh, massive hacks or exploits due to smart contracts being poorly written, uh, smart contracts that were written maliciously from the first place. Um, so that does, there obviously is a lot wrong with smart contracts, but uh, you know, on, on the plus side, it, it, it's, 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 it's code, it's, it's, it's zero or it's one, and those are the rule setters. And you know that if the smart contract, smart contract is written this way, it's gonna behave this way. Um, and so I really, I wonder if Clever has the ability, or it's up to the Clever team to build these functionality, does that not give the Clever- Together with the Clever developers community, of course. It's not just the foundation. Right. It's in right. coordination but, with the developers community. Right, but does that not mean that Clever, the same way it turns on the functionality and it adjusts the functionality, doesn't that mean that it also has the ability to, uh, uh, to, uh, to change the functionality, make it turn off, turn on? Um, essentially, the, the, you're putting the trust here, whereas the smart contracts both get their negatives, but also their positives from being truly a, 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 an, a, um, you know, a, a computer-based. It, it's, it's a, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it's, 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 it's language. It's, it's, code-based. There, there, yeah, it's code, exactly. It's code. Code is law. There. Code is law. Here, yeah, exactly. Code is law. Thank you. Uh, where their code is law here, um, code is law, but doesn't clever control the code? No. In this sense, the uh, the functionalities and the features, once built and someone utilizes it, it's permanent because we can't change a feature that someone is already using, right? So, so native to the blockchain means that it's there and it's not changeable. It's not something that we can go in and, and suddenly tweak or change. It's part of the blockchain. If we need to add a new feature or an added feature or something similar, but with a tweak, we'll have to build a new one. So uh, a lot of thought has been gone into it. Uh, many years of research and development uh, over, I think uh, I was just given a, a, an, an estimate an accumulated 100,000 uh, hours of research and development has gone in by the Clever team over the past uh, six, seven years into optimizing not just the Clever OS and Clever app 
and the SDK being built, but the blockchain itself. Mm -hmm. um, so the same way that a smart contract could be poorly written, um, and that's and that's the that's the vulnerability there, or the smart contract is maliciously written, and that's the vulnerability there. I mean, smart contracts in and of themselves, if it's written co uh, correctly, and it, and it, you know, the, the, if there there is no loopholes within the contract, uh, there is no hack in the contract. You could exploit, you know, maybe the business logic behind it. You know, if it depends on the Oracle or something like that. Um, don't the same risks carry over to the clever uh, functions, which is essentially smart contract? Isn't it just in clever written smart contracts? And it comes to the same vulnerability of either poorly written, uh, maliciously written, um, or uh, as in, aren't the exact same risks of a smart contract um, as a clever functionality, which I, I, I'm replacing here, a smart contract? It's a pretty nice word, clever functionality. I like to, I like to use the word clever trigger. Um, okay. but clever functionality works well. Uh, there is a level, level of trust into the um, clever foundation itself, especially in the beginning of the building of the blockchain. Uh, that's nothing that we uh, need to shy away from. It's something actually that builds a lot of trust because uh, the blockchain itself is going to be very business centric oriented. So we're going to work very closely with businesses originally uh, starting out in South America where we're based out of. Uh, Brazil is our home base, um, where also we're going to field uh, one of the main components of the blockchain, which is going to be a new product called Clever Bank, essentially a digital bank account for any user uh, starting out in Brazil and then moving on. Um, but yes, there is a level of trust um, to um, not just Clever, but also the auditors that are going to audit all the different triggers. So there's always going to be third-party audits that comes in and does the, uh, the kind of security revision of those triggers. Um, so in if you compare the, the DeFi world, where do you have a number on how much money was lost over the past year through exploits or hacks or? Qu quite a lot. Quite a lot. And we're talking about hundreds if not billions of dollars most likely several billions of dollars um it's unacceptable i think to continue in, in a way that has that many loopholes right we have to find a way to instead build it natively into the blockchain thereby making it more secure um and and uh, that's what we're going to do mm -hmm. oh, so by the way i'm 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 not against i wasn't knocking you guys by comparing it to smart contracts uh, I, I'm a firm believer, just like one should own their own keys, uh, one should do their own research into, into smart contracts they're relying on. The same way, uh, you know, whether whether you're relying on a third-party auditor they trust, you should also rely on a, your, your, don't, don't be foolish, don't be blind and do your own research. I, I, I hear you, but it's very hard for someone who is code illiterate to do research on a smart contract, right? Um, someone who's never done coding, which 99% of future blockchain users have not done, they don't need to go in and see is this contract, they don't even have the ability to, to understand whether the contract has veracity or is trustable or not. Um, so, so we're making it simpler. We're making it a lot more accessible, uh, cheaper to deploy, simpler to build, um, and, and more accessible to all, uh, whether you have any experience in blockchain building or blockchain developing or not. You should be able to deploy uh, any app, whether it's fully blockchain based or has a 1% uh, you know, uh, interaction uh, with, the, with the blockchain itself. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, uh, right now, when it comes to security, we're, talk we're talking about keeping funds secure. Um, for the most part, there are hot wallets and there are cold wallets. Um, with, within the realm of the custody and self-custody, um, a, a, a game, you know, you could, uh, let's, say the, let's say the least safe, but the easiest to use has historically been uh, um, third-party custodian exchanges, like a Binance, for instance, where they're holding your keys and um, it's essentially, I mean, a hot, they, they, they keep things in a hot and cold wallets, but um, that's the fastest, easiest to use. And then let's say the safest, but slowest to use is keeping your own cold storage wallet, it means it's disconnected from the internet um, and your keys are there yourself. Um, now you guys have a pretty secure solution because the keys are in my hands, but 
If it's in my hands on my app, that obviously means it is a hot wallet is connected um, uh, to the internet. Is there also a, a cold storage um, kind of option here if someone wants to be super secure with their funds? In two, in two quarters, there will be a clever hardware wallet being introduced. We've just uh, recruited uh, several uh, uh, hardware uh, engineers to build uh, a clever hardware wallet. Uh, and we're very excited about that because it gives peoples and users the option to not just feel comfortable with the, with the app they're using uh, on a daily basis and clever, but even more so say, you know what? I, I don't even want to have it on my phone. I don't even want to you know, have it on a local storage, although it's, it's completely and fully secure. I want it completely off the internet. And uh, that's why we're, yeah, we're going to build a hardware wallet as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like the fact uh, that as opposed to a ledger, um, you know, where they are taking your personal information and losing your personal information or exposing it to the world. Um, I do like that. It still comes with that. I'm assuming you won't require any KYC there as well. Uh, that's uh, up to the future. We will, of course, learn from the mistakes uh, uh, of others. Uh, let's not name names. Uh, let's just make sure, uh, you know, anything we do, like I said, we learn from the mistakes of others and we learn from the success of others. Um, so uh, any procedure uh, on, on how to store anyone's personal data uh, when sending a hardware wallet will of course be rigorously uh, reviewed before we, we implement it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Misha, that is all the questions that I have. Uh, this is your opportunity to plug whatever you want. Uh, plug your favorite song, pl plug your favorite project, plug your own company, go away. So uh, first and foremost, thank you very much, Yona. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure. Uh, evidently, we're also in the, in the same vicinity, in the same country, in the same city, but far away due to lockdown. Uh, but thank you very much. It was it was really nice that you you had me and had us uh, clever introducing you to your audience. Uh, one really fascinating um, feature that we're building beyond the exchange browser blockchain uh, hardware wallet and the bank that I've mentioned so far is a trading bot. Uh, that is going to be part of the clever subscription and we're going to launch it in Q2. Uh, it essentially gives you, we're using a lot of bots uh, in general as part of our automated uh, swap engine and, and, uh, and making sure that, you know, to find the best prices off uh, of exchanges to make sure boom, 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 that everything goes well. But to use bots for the user's uh, ability to trade is something I think is really, really, really uh, uncharted territory at the moment. And there's not really a good user experience out there where you can literally in the same app be able to subscribe to something. And, and this bot will tell you whether Bitcoin is gonna you know, uh, have a high likelihood of hitting 40K or go down to uh, under 30K or, or whatever the scenario is at the moment. But uh, you know whether you should go long or go short. Um, through AI. So we're, we're, we're using a lot of machine learning uh, as we move forward, uh, making it a bit more clever way and uh, making sure that it's accessible uh, to, to our users on a global scale. Awesome. Well, Misha, I'm very excited. It seems like not only have you guys got a pretty solid product in your hands today, but it seems like you have a ton of things coming down the pipeline. So I'm very excited. I know that once this interview is done, I'm going to go uh, check out the Clever app for myself. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Very exciting. I'm sure our viewers enjoyed it as well. And for all of us here at Reimagine 2021, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Thanks for watching.